Hi, my name is Kyle Cook. I am a neonatal nurse practitioner with Pediatrics Medical Group and I work at East Tennessee Children's Hospital. What I want to talk to you about today is how we as a hospital came together and dealt with our increasing number of babies that have been diagnosed with neonatal abstinence syndrome. So the first thing I want to talk about is what exactly neonatal abstinence syndrome is. Um, in case you don't know, um, when babies are in utero and exposed to opioid medications, when they are born and the umbilical cord is cut, their supply is cut off. So they basically go cold turkey. The NAS is a constellation of symptoms that they experience in withdrawal. These can range from irritability, high-pitched crying, um, skin excoriation, they don't feed well, they have profuse diarrhea, they can have a lot of feeding intolerance, and sometimes have seizures. Uh, babies in neonat with neonatal abstinence syndrome can be very difficult to take care of because they are so inconsolable. The reason we worry about this is because moms take opioid medications while they're pregnant not knowing that their babies are going to have withdrawal when they're born. In the general population, about half of pregnancies are unintended. In opioid abusing women, that's almost 90% of pregnancies are unintended. So these moms are taking opioid medications, not meaning to get pregnant. And once she realizes she's pregnant, she's on a medication that she can't wean off of or stop taking, and that sets the baby up for NAS. There was an article published in 2015 by Stephen Patrick who looked at the incidence of NAS compared to a previous article in 2012, and he saw an increasing number of babies born with NAS. As a matter of fact, he found that one baby was born every 25 minutes that was suffering from NAS. In 2012, there were almost 22,000 babies born suffering with NAS. So at Children's Hospital, we had an increasing number of babies um, starting about 2010 that we were diagnosing with NAS. We did a literature review, could not find a best practice, so we came up with our own approach to deal with this increasing number of babies. It was a multidisciplinary approach that included all aspects of taking care of these babies. A non-pharmacological approach was one of the most important things we addressed, and that included environment, trying to decrease the stimulus as much as possible for these babies, creating a nice, quiet environment. And one of the ways we dealt with that was creating a private room unit, a 16-bed unit that every baby had their own room. So we were able to increase, decrease light, stimulus, noise from noise machines or mobiles, that kind of thing to be able to decrease that stimulus environment when babies couldn't deal with that. Um, we use a low lactose formula to help with the gastric symptoms and also utilized um, cuddlers, which were specially trained volunteers who were trained to how they could hold and comfort these babies who can be very difficult to take care of. We established an oral mor morphine protocol that was a symptom-based protocol. We use a Finnegan scoring tool instead of weight-based dosing, and also used acetaminophen and simethicone to help with other withdrawal symptoms. We assembled a NAS task force, which um, started out with about six people around the table and weekly meetings every week, someone else would come to the table until we had to divide these meetings up into disciplines because there were so many people around the table. We quickly learned that this was an very complex problem and it affected every department in the hospital as well as so many community organizations. Our Metropolitan Drug Coalition got involved, um, DCS, um, all the social workers were involved and we had this task force weekly meetings for about three years dealing with this problem. We had so many challenges, um, physical and emotional challenges, based on the increased workload. We were, we were seeing about 30 to 40 percent of our census were babies with NAS, and at one point, one day, we had 37 babies in our nursery that were being treated for NAS, so you can imagine the um, difficulty in dealing with that many babies. The biggest problem we found um, was actually the educational deficit regarding um, addiction. The nurses would get very angry with these moms and not know how to deal with the complexity of the social situation. So one of the, the most important things we did was education for addiction and the science of addiction so nurses could more understand how these moms 
thought and where the addiction process came from. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you found this helpful. My contact information is on the slide if you have any questions.